from that angle, right? Sideways. It depends. Give me a second. Okay. Okay. Um, we'll talk about the integumentary system. When you say integument, you're talking about the skin, but when you're talking about the integumentary system, it includes your hair and nail. Uh, together, we call it the system. And here we have a model of the skin. Uh, this model is divided into three sections, one representing the skin of the palm or the, uh, or the sole. Palm or the sole has thick skin. Then you have the skin of your armpit and then here you have the scalp, this section. And the same thing here. Uh, here you have the palm or sole, the, the skin of the armpit and this is for the scalp. Two different models but Pretty much the structures should be the same. So let's start here. So we divide the skin into two layers technically, the epidermis and the middle portion is your dermis. The hypodermis is uh, not part of the skin but it is discussed along with the skin. Uh, hypodermis is primarily made up of, you can see this yellow colored tissue, whether it's this model or this model. The tissue there uh, is adipose tissue. The layer is hypodermis, it's below the dermis, hypodermis. And the tissue is adipose tissue. And the tiny dots represent the cells of the adipose tissue we call adipocytes. So that's for the hypodermis. Now let's move to the topmost or the superficial layer, which is your epidermis. The epidermis has five layers. We call them stratum, plural strata, each one has a name. So we have from the base of the epidermis all the way to the top, we have the stratum basal. You can see the wavy orange colored line that represents the stratum basal. In this model you can see this uh, dark grayish wavy lines that represents the stratum basal and above the stratum basal the next layer is going to be your stratum spinosum then you have the stratum granulosum and then this whitish line or the bluish line represents the stratum lucidum then you have multiple layers of the stratum corneum and the point we have to make a note the stratum basal and the stratum lucidum they are single row of cells which means it's simple squamous tissue. The, all the cells of the epidermis are the squamous type. Uh, all the other strata, they have the multiple layers, so we call the stratified squamous epithelium. The stratum lucidum you find only in the palm or the sole, in thick skin. Otherwise, you don't see that. And also, if you see the epidermis, it's much thicker in the palm or sole compared to the rest of your body. Okay, So there's a way you can remember all the strata from the top to the bottom, meaning stratum corneum, stratum lucidum, stratum granulosum, stratum spinosum, and stratum basal. This is a mnemonic we can use. Come, let's get sun burn. Okay, if that helps. And then let's look at some of the structures. Here you have the hair. This round portion at the bottom of the hair, we call it the bulb. The rest of the hair that's inside the epidermis and dermis, we call it the root. Whatever is projecting out, we call it the shaft. So if you look at this model also, you can see the bulb, the root, and the shaft of the hair. Then attached to the hair you'll find uh, the oil gland, we call it the sebaceous gland, it produces sebum, S-E-B-U-M, sebum, it's an oily fatty secretion, it's like a natural moisturizer for the skin, and there's a tiny muscle attached to the hair, it helps to make the hair stand erect, so we call it piloerector, pilus means hair, piloerector muscle, and then we have some other glands we call the sweat glands. 
Um, the sweat glands are also called as sudori ferrous glands. Some of them are found close to the hair. Uh, some of them are found far away from the hair. And in the armpit, you'll find the apocrine type. Apocrine type is a specialized sweat gland that you find in armpit, anus, genitalia, and select areas of the body. But otherwise, you find the pseudoriferous glands of the merocrine type. So there are two types, apocrine, which is found in select parts of the body, and then the others, the most common ones, are the merocrine type. So we did the oil gland or sebaceous gland. We did the sweat gland or pseudoriferous gland. Then we have to look at some of the receptors that help to detect the touch, pressure, or pain. So if you see the dermis, we divide it halfway into papillary layer, and below that, the reticular layer. In the papillary layer, you can see these projections. Though the finger-like projections are called the dermal papillae. You can see them better here. So that's why they give the name papillary layer for the superior layer of the dermis. And mainly you have dense connective tissue in, this, in the dermis. And if you look at each papilla inside, you see the nerve ending and a bulb-like structure here. That's your touch receptor, also called Meissner's carpusel. That helps to detect gentle touch. Whereas down here, you have another structure, which is the Pacinian carpusel, uh, helps to detect pain and pressure. So if you want, you can remember M for mild touch, M for my Meissner's carpusel, P for pressure and pain, P for Pacinian carpusel. So those are the uh, receptors for touch and pain and pressure. And I think that covers most of the parts of the skin.